Hi everyone, this is Andy Neal and this is a motion time saver tutorial. We're going to be creating a heart rate monitor. Okay, we don't really need a long sequence, so I'm going to change this 300 frame default to 75. We're going to start by drawing the squiggly line that's going to make up our EKG. Now there's several ways that you can go about this, but I found that the easiest way is to use the paint stroke tool. Select the paint stroke tool or hit P on your keyboard. Then draw away. Now a normal heart rhythm has four jumps in it, one for each heart valve. Go ahead and do as best you can with the paint tool and don't worry that it doesn't look perfect. We're going to be cleaning it up in a minute. Go over to the selection tool and click and hold it down. See this reveals some of Motion's more specific editing tools. Second from the bottom is what's called the Edit Points tool. Select that and you'll see all the control points that were created when you drew your EKG. What we want to do is we want to get rid of the excess points so that what we're left with is a uh, good looking path. Hold down the Shift key and lasso the extra points on the first line. Notice that I'm leaving the end point and a couple of points on the right. We're going to be using these for the uh, small jumps. Once you have these points selected, just hit the delete key. and Go on down the path, deleting the extra points. For the large jumps in the line, we want to make sure that there are no extra points between the peaks. So uh, double check the ends and make sure that there's only a single point there. Now take those points that I left and use them to make the small jumps in the EKG. Play around with it until it looks good for you. And don't think that you can't have any curves to your line. A true EKG does have some curve to it, so feel free to add that in. Select a point at the top of the little jump and adjust its Bezier handles. If you don't see any handles when you click on the point, then right click and choose Smooth. The reverse of this holds true if you have some curve in the line and you'd like it to be sharp or a straight line. You just select Linear instead. Now just keep tweaking with the path until you're happy. The closer you can get to a real looking EKG, the better the effect's going to look. Also, you want to make sure that the straight lines in this path are on the same plane. If you don't have it on, turn on snapping by hitting N on the keyboard, and then arrange the lines so that they're level with each other. When you're done, it should uh, look something like this. There. Now the hard part's all done. Now we're ready to animate. Now to animate the stroke, we could simply keyframe the last and first offset parameters. It's really easy and it gives you a decent effect, but I want something that looks a little cooler than that. At the top of the Style tab, click on the Shape Style button and choose Light, Light Streak 3. Now that's a little more like it. See, now the line fades in and out instead of just writing on, and the path is changing colors too. But now we have to fix what the shape style has done to my nice solid line. First, click on the advance button and deselect the pen pressure. You should notice an immediate pickup in the performance of the playback. Pen pressure puts a lot of strain on the program and it's not really necessary for this tutorial. Then click on the stroke tab and twirl open the width over stroke parameter. This is telling motion to gradually make the line thicker as it draws on. I want it to be more uniform than that. Select the first point and hit delete. Then select the second point and type 100 in the box beside width over stroke. Below that is the brush scale. Now it's set to 100 but the randomness is set to 112. Take the randomness down to 0 and do the same to the jitter. There. See now we've got a nice smooth line again. But the line itself is a little thin for my taste so click on the style tab and play around with the width until you get to a, a size that you like. Now I'm in an HD project so for me that's going to be about 30 to 35. It'll be different for you if you're working in a standard depth project. Back to the stroke tab. Twirl down the color over stroke parameter. You'll see this is the animation that's giving us that cool fade in and fade out that I like. However I don't really like the color. It's not very EKG -y. I want to change the color but not affect the great animation that I didn't even have to do. So if I were to click up here next to this parameter, this is called the animation menu. If I clicked here I could reset the parameter but then it would reset everything including the animation. So let's just undo that. Fortunately, 
if I go down to the color parameter here, I can reset just the color part of the animation. It's grayed out right now, but if you click one of the color range boxes, then the parameter activates. I'm just going to click reset parameter, and it's going to change the color to black. I have to do it to each color box separately. Now I'm going to change the color because black isn't going to really work. I'll make this one sort of a dark blue-green like that. And I want the other side to be the same color, so I'm just going to click and drag this color from here and drop it on the other color box. Now I need to add one more box. I'm going to do that just by clicking right in the middle here. This box I want to make kind of a light blue-green. What this does is it makes the center part of the path lighter than the ends, allowing our heart rate to kind of jump out a little bit more. No pun intended. There. That's great. Now there's only one more thing I'd like to mess around with. That's the timing of the animation. Now you may think it's fine now, but I'd like to see it a little faster, so I'm going to show you a quick way to adjust it. Go back up to the color overstroke parameter and click on the animation menu. Down at the bottom, choose Show in Keyframe Editor. This is a great little button and a way to get keyframes for parameters that aren't usually shown in the keyframe editor. Now by default, all the animated properties are fit in the window, but if it isn't, you can click this button over here to fit them. So, looking at all these keyframes, you can kind of see why I didn't want to have to animate it myself, especially when Motion's already done it for me. However, I'm not quite happy with the timing. I'd like to make it a little quicker. Normally this would be a huge pain, but there's this great little tool up here called the Keyframe Edit Tool. Click on it and then draw a lasso around the keyframes. This gives you sort of a bounding box for the keyframes. I can click and drag to move the keyframes down the timeline to change when it starts and stops, or I can globally and relatively change the values of all the parameters by going up and down. Or what I want to do is to shorten the relative distance between the keyframes. You click on this point here and drag to the left a few frames. Good. That's better now that it's a little bit faster. Now I'd like to see that the jump be quicker relative to the rest of the animation so that it's not quite so even. I'm going to step through the animation to discover which keyframes are really affecting that part of the animation that I want to speed up. It looks like this set of keyframes. So I'm going to lasso just this bit and drag them to the right to speed up this part of the animation. By speeding up just this bit, I'm actually slowing down the animation on the other end, but that's what I'm looking for. See, much better. Well, there you have it. A great little heart rate monitor and some cool time-saving techniques to tweaking animations. I'm Andy Neal, and this has been a motion time-saver tutorial.